Chicago, Gene Sapikoff from the Charleston Post and Courier. What about number 16, and what's the best part and worst part about being a coach's son? Uh, well, I, you probably have to ask Will that, because uh, I've never been a coach's son. Um, uh, I would say maybe the best part is, uh, you know, you get to do some cool stuff with your dad, I guess. You know, I mean, he's grown up. Uh, it's, this has been his life, you know. I mean, I remember, uh, I mean, he's been at bowl games his whole life. I remember at the Orange Bowl in 1999, I got him, I mean, he's standing there with, what do they call that orange? Opie or, op, uh, some, what do they call that orange? I can't remember what they call the orange, but the orange, the guy, the orange, uh, the guy that dressed up as orange. And he's like, uh, he's like two, you know, it's an amazing experience. Uh, Tom Brady beat us in that game, by the way, in overtime. Uh, but anyway, uh, watching my children, and then Drew was born and was watching them every year. Will's first Christmas was at the Music City Bowl in a hotel. And we had a little tree, you know, and it's like, Merry Christmas, son. Uh, you know, literally, uh, his first Christmas. He was born in August uh, of 98. And so I think the best part is those unique experiences that a, a, a child of a coach gets and how he's grown up and he's had a chance to know the players. You know, I, I almost got out of coaching in like 2000, um, 2005 or six, maybe six. You know, they were little and they were playing ball and I was gone all the time. And I remember being down in Florida calling home and, and uh, you know, Will just hit a home run and Drew was doing this and Clay was crying and Cass going, yeah, you know, and it's like, and I'm, I'm down gone for like four weeks you know, and I was missing. I just had this moment of, you know what, man, I just, I just felt like I was sacrificing my family. And, and I just, I told Kath, I said, you know, I said, Kath, I just, I can't do this anymore. And I said, I just, and I came home and I said, we're going to have a, so we had this family meeting and I got Will, Drew and Clay sitting on the bed, feet just kind of hanging over the bed and they're just looking at me. And uh, Will, uh, Will was probably, I don't know, eight or eight, seven or eight. And, and I just told him, I said, listen, you know, I just want y'all to know, hey, y'all are the most important thing in the world to me. I love y'all. And, you know, hey, your dad can do a lot of things. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get out of coaching and I'm going to get a job and where I can coach your teams and be home on the weekend. And I just, I just don't want to miss this opportunity to be a great dad. And, uh, you know, they're looking at me like, you know, and when I, when I got done with my big speech, you know, I had this big speech ready. Uh, you know, they looked at me and they go, but daddy, if you're not a coach, we won't get to know the players and then we don't get to ride the bus. And, and all of a sudden God used my kids to speak to me and impact me literally, you know, and all of a sudden my kids start opening my eyes to all the things I was focused on the things that we didn't get to do. And my, God used my kids to get me to focus on the things that we do get to do and that they got to do. And, and a whole different lens and perspective that I didn't have. You know, I just focused on what I was missing out on and this and that. And so that was a life-changing moment for me. It really was. Uh, you know, so through uh, these boys' mouth and their experiences that they had had, they started telling me and like, Dad, we love you being a coach. And mom videos anyway you know she videos it and uh she's a terrible videoer by the way uh and so you know that was an impactful time for me and from that point on i said you know what i just golly i got to change my perspective here and and i i because i love what i do but i just i didn't want to sacrifice and i realized you know what you can be a great coach and be a great father and be a great husband you can be all those things. You don't have to sacrifice all those things to be a great coach. And so that's just how I've tried to, to go about my business. And so I've tried to teach that to my staff and my, all my coaches and my young staff, you know, and I've tried to, to set that example for them. And, and, and it's very inclusive at Clemson. I want the wives there. I want the kids there. I mean, it's a romper room every other day running around there uh, because I think it's important. I want these coaches to know. I want them to go to the games. You know, I, I, don't, I want them, hey, we don't, we don't meet before nine. I want them to take their kids to school. Uh, you know, we got plenty of time to get done what we need to get done. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, you only get to be a father one time. And uh, so uh, I think the best part is the experience, all those things that they get to do that people don't get to see, police escorts with a bus, uh, you know, being, getting to know these players as people coming to practice. Uh, the worst part is probably uh, the negativity, you know. I mean, you got to have some thick skin. Uh, it's, that's obviously a part of it too and, and conversations that I had to have. Uh, when they were in the seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and you know, kids can be mean. Uh, and then social media starts coming on the scene, and now everybody has a uh, an opportunity to uh, say whatever they want to say, whenever they want to say it, however they want to say it, and uh, that can be tough for young kids. So uh, that's probably the biggest, the toughest part. And people judging them maybe because of maybe who their dad is, uh, but. The good far outweighs the bad.